All right, now let's say I have a table. Yes, very artistic looking table. And I have a banana on the table. All right, now let's say we are gonna look at it from a bird's eye view. So of course this weirdly cube shaped banana is gonna be on top of this rectangular table surface. And we're gonna say that the banana has mass, hopefully, or else it won't exist. And because it has mass, it is subject to Earth's gravity and it does have weight because, you know, Earth's gravitational acceleration is pulling it and causing it to have a force that goes downwards. And the force is going to be acting downwards and which also means it's going to be acting on the surface of the table. Okay, so acting on the surface of the table, uh, we know that there's going to be a force acting on the table surface, but not all the surface. We can see that it's only covering this this much of the table's surface. So um, if we were to find out how much force was being applied to a unit of, sur of surface area, we would have to just find the ratio between force and contact surface area. That would be equal to force over area. That's This concept is pressure. How much pressure an object is applying onto a surface. Basically, how much force an object is applying to a unit of surface, that's going to be the pressure. Got to turn on the light because it's quite dark. Um, all right, now, we. this is not the only place where pressure is actually found. It's also found in liquids. Why don't I show you an example with a beaker? Okay, surprisingly tall beaker. And there's going to be some water. And there's also going to be a man who could somehow fit in the beaker. We don't know why. And then there's going to be a height difference from uh, where the man is at and this, um, I guess, the surface of, of the water. And... Uh, let's say, yeah, because we can easily measure the height between a man and the surface, so that's easy to measure, so that's a given. Uh, another value given in this situation could also be density, because, you know, because he's in a liquid and it's pretty easy to measure density of a liquid, we'll just do that. Now, this is going to be our situation. How do we find the pressure of the water acting on his face? Well, you're probably going to tell me, how is there pressure? It's liquid. Liquid has no pressure. Well, liquid is matter right and matter has mass and mass is subject as i said before to earth's gravity meaning it's subject to earth's gravitational acceleration to cause a force f equals ma in this case w equals mg because it's going to cause a weight and the weight is going to be a force pushing downwards acting on the guy's face and the thing is it's going to be covering surface area on his face meaning force over area there's going to be pressure. So it's going to be some pressure being applied to his face. All right. So, yeah. Um, however, can we really use F over A, this regular formula, to find the pressure acting on his face in this situation? First of all, we can't use A, mainly because his face is a perfectly round noggin. And it's also quite difficult to really find the surface area acting on his face. And also, the thing is, Finding the amount of force acting on his face is also quite difficult, mainly because we would need to know um, how much water is really acting on his face. I mean, the water is acting in all directions, so it's really difficult to know how much water is really acting on his face. Is it, you know, this much of water? Is it this volume of water is acting on his face? Or is it um, even more water? It's even more difficult because the area is quite difficult to determine, so we can't really know how much force is being applied in that particular contact area. I just cut off that guy's head. Ugh. All right, now, so force is quite difficult to determine. I uh, forgot about that height. Height? Yeah, force is quite difficult to determine because mass is also quite difficult to, to determine. Um, so it's, yeah, we don't know how much mass is really doing the force, doing, doing the force action. So we, it's quite difficult to tell because water is going in every direction as due to kinetic particle theory. So. Quite difficult to use F over A in this situation. But we are given values like H and Rho being density. So why don't we manipulate F over A so that it's about H and Rho? Because we have H and Rho, but we cannot find F and A anywhere here. So why don't we change this formula to be about H and Rho using algebraic manipulation? All right, so I'm going to show you the formula for pressure. It's going to be P is equal to F over A, but we're going to do some cool algebraic manipulation. So, we somehow got to get H and Rho involved into this formula so, because, so that we could f apply it to the situation. We can't apply it because, we can't apply it now because we don't have F and A. So, 
how can we get h in this formula well we know that area is actually just volume divided by height so we can just divide um replace with that v over h oh, double a fraction quite ugly so we're just gonna uh, separate the two fractions it's just gonna be f divided by v over h and we're just gonna change the divide sign to multiply by finding the reciprocal times h over v all right so we got h involved that's one quantity down and now we just gotta get density involved well it's not really obvious here but density as you know is related to mass and volume and we can see volume here and mass is somewhere here because mass times acceleration is equal to force so mass is related to force we can get density in here don't worry we can get you in here so force we can convert it to mass times acceleration newton second law m a all right so how do we um get density involved now well we know that density is just equal to total mass over total volume so if i just want to isolate mass that's just going to be um, volume multiplied by density so v rho is equal to m then we're going to substitute this value into the equation so we're going to replace m with v rho okay v rho all right now we can see that one over v is here and we can also see that v is here so they cancel each other out all right and all we have left whoops all we have left is rho a the acceleration multiplied by h but take note the acceleration that's causing the force in the first place we remember it's acceleration due to gravity right because the force that we're referring to is actually the weight of the water which pushes down on the guy's face to create pressure so the weight is caused by gravitational acceleration meaning this acceleration in this case is not just any acceleration it's gravitational acceleration so it's going to be g all right so we can rearrange this to make it one short formula h rho g there this is the formula for liquid pressure there pretty simple right we can apply this because we can easily measure height you know once this man was submerged i'm gonna bring back the man into existence i'm sorry he's probably uh suffering and drowning misery so uh, we can measure height easily by, you know, because this is pretty simple. And we can also measure density easily in a liquid. And of course, gravitational acceleration of the planet. I feel like that's quite well known. It's 9.81 or 10 if you are in secondary school. Now, this is actually quite useful because you could tell the pressure at different heights, okay, uh, for scuba divers so that they make sure that they're at a safe pressure and their suits are pressurized to allow them to survive in very deep pressure uh, i mean very high pressure deep waters so yeah this formula is exactly the same this was derived from v over a so it's equal to to f over a sorry no, i said v over a f over a i mean so yeah so h over g is the same as f over a they're the same they're both pressure but just in different situations this is mainly for liquids because we know h and g and rho for liquids but we know f and a for solids so yeah this is the formula for liquid pressure hope you know how it's derived now all right bye